ESPN.com. Uh, just to dive right in, is there such a thing as having too many quarterbacks on your roster? Wow, yeah, it's, uh, that's a great question. One, uh, one that's been uh, asked quite a bit. And, uh, you know, I don't know. You know, I think, uh, you know, the good part, those guys uh, understand they're, you know, it's an interesting group. Uh, a little bit I've been around them, great young men, hard working, and th there's a tremendous bond between all three of them, which is a great tribute to, uh, you know, Tom, what he, what he was able to put together, Coach Meyer and the staff. And, um, you know, they compete hard because they want to win and they want to play, but they also help each other. And uh, so I think it'll be interesting. I'm excited to get, get a chance to get to know the guys and uh, look forward to seeing really what develops. But, you know, I don't know. It's kind of a good problem to probably have right now, isn't it? So to a coach to want to I mean, you obviously see the amount of talent that you could come work with was that a selling point for you aside from going to work for the national camps and all the other things well yeah I mean that's a part of it I think this is you know the Ohio State University right and growing up in Ohio it's a dream come true to be able to come here and work with uh, coach Meyer and and really all the staff I mean these guys do a great job and and the culture and the program and and it's what what I believe in and and uh, I'm I'm really excited Bill Rubino, it's from the Columbus Dispatch. Could you uh, describe the process by which you took the job and, and your Buckeye ties? How big a Buckeye fan were you growing up? Yeah, you know, uh, it was interesting, obviously, being in the Big Ten, coming from the University of Nebraska, so there was always a, a tie, you know, uh, recently. Um, and then uh, knowing Ed Warner as well, with Ed and I working together at the University of Kansas, and um, Coach Meyer and I crossed paths really early in my career when I was a high school coach, he recruited one of my players to Florida. And uh, so I've known him for, for a while. And, uh, you know, we just kind of always crossed path and seen each other. And and uh, so it's just kind of how it worked out. I think when Tom had his opportunities to go, they were they were looking for a guy and, and coach quarterbacks, maybe had the Ohio roots, um, recruiting Texas possibly, knowing the Big Ten Conference. So I think, you know, it was a, a pretty good marriage. Um, and I think that started it and started that process. You know, as far as, be, you know, how, you know, th this is the university, right? And this is the place. So when you grow up and uh, even though young sound a little bit further away, it's it, you always watch it. And it was always great uh, to watch the big game. And uh, you just know everything about the university and what it stands for. And it's just, uh, again, just a great honor to be here. Describe yourself as a coach. What's important to you? As a coach? Um, you know, you know. I believe in uh, our guys. I mean, they got to be accountable. You know, we got to build trust. They got to be tough. I mean, I think toughness. That's the one thing. Uh, somebody asked me the other day. Said, Coach, what was it like watching the championship game or the game versus Alabama? What did you notice? I said, I noticed how tough Ohio State was. You know, just physically, mentally tough. And growing up in that environment, that's. That's really important. I mean, it's kind of, you know, my roots. And, uh, you know, just I think that's that's important, you know, being accountable, saying who you are, being, having integrity. You know, if you're going to do something, you do it. And so, um, you know, that, a little bit like that. And uh, front row, Todd. Coach Todd Porter from the Canton Repository. Taking over an offense that scored a lot of points, put up a lot of yards last year, particularly in those last three games. How much of a challenge is it to – improve upon that along with it yeah um, obviously I think the first thing you got to do is you got to keep challenging the returning players and you got to motivate them um, you got to keep pushing them and that's going to be probably the biggest uh, besides that developing the younger players I think those two things are going to be very uh, paramount to what happens um, we score a lot of points we were a, an extremely efficient offense but we weren't perfect and you strive for perfection. That's how I am. I'm going to strive for that. I know Ed's the same way. And, uh, you know, we're just going to keep pushing our guys and pushing our guys and pushing our guys. I mean, that's that's the key to it. they got to keep working to get better and wanting to get better. Back row left, Steve. Yeah, Coach. Steve Hellwagon with 24-7 Sports. Uh, just the question I have is you take this job and you have to go in and recruit Joe Burrow and Torrance Gibson and build relationships and perhaps – you were already recruiting one or both of those guys at Nebraska. Just go through that whole process with both those guys, the ups, the downs, the what you had to sell them on, what they need to find out about you and all that. Yeah, you know, it's uh, I knew of those guys. Um, at the University of Nebraska, we, we had to commit early. 
and it took us out of the race for a 2015 quarterback. So as the recruiting process, because um, he committed, I think, in February, around this time a year ago, <clears throat> that we, we kind of backed off those guys. But I knew of them, stayed in touch with some guys here and there. But uh, they, they were aware. I've seen guys be at my areas when I would be out on the road recruiting or as offensive coordinator, I'd go see all the offensive guys. So I might swing by a school here, swing by a school there to see a guy to check in on them. So um, there were relationships. Uh, Joe obviously, uh, you know, has strong ties to Nebraska with his family. Um, and so being able to get into his home and just kind of letting them know the lay of the land of what actually took place in our process over there um, to be able to just sit down and spend time with them really and just get them the chance to see who I am get a chance to know them and the family and the same with Torrance you know I think it was we we knew Torrance uh, at, at University of Nebraska we recruited a player even two years ago and when, when he was there we, we we saw him practicing and those types of things but again it was one of those things we kind of really weren't looking for quarterbacks at the time we went and uh, had the opportunity just to sit down and visit with mom and, and go every, every time I could go out, I went and saw those guys. With upperclassmen in front of them, what's been the talk about redshirting those guys? It seemed like an obvious decision, but you never know what you're transferring. Never know, right? You never know. The one play away, you never know. Cardell Jones is going to win the national title for you, right? I mean, you just never know. So that's what you tell them. And they're going to develop, you know, under Coach Meyer's system here. And what he's done everywhere he's ever been. Quarterbacks have been extremely, extremely successful. And I think they saw that. They thought they, they saw the opportunity to come and play in an offense where they could get better. They saw a chance to play at a program that's going to develop them as young men, as student athletes. And they, want, they wanted to be here at the, the Ohio State University. So uh, my hat's off to them. They're going to compete. And, and our guys know they're going to compete. So. Tim, Dave Biddle from Bucknuts. Along those same lines about Joe Burrow, there was a lot of talk that he was, um, maybe not offended, but disappointed that Nebraska never stepped up with an offer. Um, did you have to do a lot of smoothing over there with him after you took the job here at Ohio State? Yeah, more discussions than smoothing over. I think once they realize, I mean, when you're working at a university, you obviously support the university and what's going on. And you know, once once we made the change and we came here, we were able to disclose a little bit kind of how all the process took place, the numbers, how we were recruiting, who we were getting, those types of things. And I think once they, they saw that and saw it as genuine, it was a, here, here's what happened, I, th I think they felt really comfortable. And then as we got to know each other, I think, I, I know they know, they felt really good about it. He doesn't have a, a super strong arm, but he seems like he does so many things well. Just talk about his game a little yeah, bit. Yeah, coach's kid, tough. You know, he's a... I got a chance one day to watch him play basketball. What a competitor. I mean, driven, just there's sometimes guys that can jump higher or run faster or whatever in that game. But, boy, he was just playing his guts out. And you got to love that. And he's a coach's kid, and he's smart. He brings a lot of it factor and intangibles to him. And uh, a lot of times those are the guys that end up being very successful as quarterbacks because they're going to they're gonna put the grind in. They're going to put that work in to be able to be that guy. Uh, Tim May, Columbus Dispatch. First on Burrow, did you tell him it was Bo Pelini's fault? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm just joking. Uh, uh, as, as you go into your meeting room now, do, do you do you set your players in seats? This is the first guy, second guy, third guy, fourth guy. Are you that kind of coach? And uh, number two, uh, well, I ask you number two first. I mean, but how, how do you kind of arrange things? No, right now, um, I'm trying to meet them more as people not as position depth chart type guys I'm trying to get to know them a little bit get let them get to know me you know we're we're a little bit you know we're in a unique position i mean number one i'm replacing a, a great guy i mean he did an outstanding job here and and uh i'm coming in here and have to bond with with three super young men four really more than that there's seven guys gotten all the walk-ons but i got to bond with all those guys in that room and uh, before I could really coach them and reach them, I got to get to know them. And so that's kind of where I'm at at this point. The other thing, uh, it looks like, based on what, what, you, what we've been able to see, Cardale's the only one of those three that's probably going to be full go for the spring. How much does that kind of hamstring you trying to get an evaluation going, Tim? I mean, uh, 
Uh, I don't know if it hand, did you see him throw? I don't know if it hands, hands stream no, that's you know, this, but, you know I, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, you know, I think that one thing is they got a lot of game experience under their belt, you know, both Braxton, um, you know, JT. I mean, those guys, they, they've played a lot of ball games, took a lot of snaps. Um, you, you could just put the film on and have the opportunity to evaluate those guys a little bit. So, and, and even really Cardell's, you know, played a fair amount, but there's still growth in all, all of those guys. There's no question. They'll be the first ones to tell you when you, if you had asked them. So, uh, gets a chance to maybe see some of the younger guys, what Steven can do and those things. What does it probably come down to though, in your mind, what is the cutting line for a quarterback, the starting quarterback? What makes, usually makes the difference? Winning. They got to win. They got to. They got to make the guys around them better. You know, they got to not turn the ball over. Get the ball to the right guys. Usually, that equates to winning. If if they're making the players around them better, they're doing the right things, getting the ball to the right guys at the right time, getting us in the right protections. We're probably going to be winning. So um, that's how you're able to evaluate the the production of a quarterback. It's the offense. It's not always him or his statistics. Uh, Doug Lee Maurice with Cleveland.com. Philosophically, do you believe that you could play two quarterbacks in the fall, or do you want the guy? Well, I don't. Well, I don't know. I haven't given that a whole lot of thought. How it is? Um, really haven't. And are you certain that Braxton Miller will be on the on the team in 2015? Yes. And last question. Have you had much chance to talk with Braxton? Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Cleveland.com, sorry. Um, Torrance Gibson um, is obviously one of the more highly rated guys that's in your class right now. Um, but a lot of programs were recruiting him as an athlete, not necessarily as a quarterback. When you watch his film, what makes you so sure that that's the right position for him, and how do you break down the way he plays that position? I, I think he's a special player with the ball in his hand. There's no question about it. And Again, some of the things I talked about winning, you know, he's able to make the players around him better. He's able to move the offense. Um, you know, like all quarterbacks, even the guys we have here, there's still some mechanical things or technique things or knowledge things that they still have to pick up in order to function at the highest level that they can. Joe, Torrance, they're, they're no different. They're going to have to come in. They're going to have to learn. They're going to have to improve. They're going to have to maybe do a couple of things different than what they normally done. But athleticism, talent-wise, intangible-wise, he's a, he's a winner. He's another guy. He's won championships. He's been able to go into a program and turn that program around to win. It takes something to be able to do that, and I believe that. I think when a guy's a Division One top-notch quarterback, he's got to get people around him to play that way and win. And and that's part of being tough. It's part of part of all the things that we had talked about up here a little bit earlier, what I stand for and believe in. And, and I think he possesses those things.